Well, babe, you're officially a mom. And you're officially a dad. <laughs> so my wife, Angela, is definitely my favorite blogger and YouTuber extraordinaire. And she's a pretty amazing wife, I must add. And my guess is that a lot of you may have seen my husband, Matt, on TV or in the movies. Wyatt from Timeless, Liam from 90210, anyone? Chicago from Pitch Perfect 3. I mean, he's bringing the sexy. All right, all right. So if you guys didn't know, Angela and I created a podcast called Hello Bump to chronicle our journey as expecting first-time parents. We really just started it for something for us to look back on, but we ended up really loving our weekly chat. Yeah, so much so that we couldn't stop there. I mean, now is the fun part, right? Now is the payoff for the nine months of pregnancy. Now is where our life begins. We have a brand new beautiful baby girl and we are so in love. And we want you guys to come on this new journey with us of figuring out, frankly, how to raise this little thing. We know it's going to be tough at times, but we also know the rewards are great. We're going to be chatting week to week about the joys and the struggles of learning how to do this parenting thing. I'm pretty sure we're going to mess up a lot. But from every mistake comes a lesson that we can pass on to you. So join us in this wild ride as we undertake our newest challenge, parenthood. Hello, Hello baby. baby. <laughs> Why don't you say it? Hello, baby. Come on, give it some oomph. Hello, baby. That was good. Is that good? Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the Hello, Baby podcast. My name is Matt Lanter. I'm Angela Lanter. I don't know what kind of accent that yeah, was. I don't you, really know you, where that was. Where are you from I, right I, now? I don't know. I don't know where it came from. I got embarrassed. <laughs> hey, don't get embarrassed. <laughs> this, is, this is your podcast. This is your thing. <laughs> We, we're all captivated by what you say right now. Mm, mm. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For you to ever be ca captivated by what I say, that's nice. What? Yeah. Why, why would you say such a thing? Because you don't listen to me half the time. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, we had planned on talking about the uh, follow-up to the depression, um, but it seems we need a little, uh, a little marital di uh, dispute here. Yeah. Um, I can actually prove that you don't listen to me because I showed you the thing of Amelia Clark in Times Square this week dressed up as Jon Snow. Mm -hmm. And then today you showed it to me and go, look at this, Amelia Clark dressed up as Jon Snow in New York. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? I literally showed that to you on my phone yesterday. And I knew when I showed it to you that you weren't listening to me or paying attention. You were brushing me off. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. You got me there. Yep. Um. Mm -hmm. Hold on, let me just uh, turn you down a tick. I know, I'm too loud in my headphones. I don't like it. Well, uh, normally I have to turn you up because Angela has what I call a little church mouse voice. Mm -hmm. And so I typically have to boost her volume after we record the podcast. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would like to boost my volume all the time if it was up to you. I, I, Angela tries to talk to me from far off parts of the house. I don't know if you... Um, wives out there do this to your husbands or husbands uh do, do your wives do this to you like they try to talk to you from the master closet when you know i'm downstairs like on another level underneath some areas it's just that doesn't work you make it sound like we live in like you know a four-story house or something <laughs> no true story we only live in a two-story house and most people have basements and have three stories I grew up with only a ranch with a basement. Oh, okay. Hmm. We digress. <laughs> Welcome to Hello Baby Podcast. Uh, I already said I'm, I'm Matt, my wife Angela. We've got a little girl named McKenley. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been doing this now for 54 episodes documenting wow. her, her journey of uh, growing up and our journey of parents as raising her mm -hmm. and everything that we've experienced and my have we experienced. Mm -hmm. And still experiencing mm -hmm. experiencing yep and today uh we've talked about this before we're going to tell you a little bit more of our experience in, in a very uh real way mm -hmm. we two episodes ago uh, by the way uh, this is hello baby podcast and this is what we talk about all things baby and kids okay good <laughs> two episodes ago we talked about post weaning depression mm -hmm. which after that episode i learned is also called post delayed postpartum okay yeah but it's really all the same i mean it's the yeah. same feelings of depression and yes 
you know, possibly anxiety and all that kind of stuff. So today, uh, as promised, we are doing a follow-up. This is more, more like a part two. So if you haven't listened to part one, go listen to that part one and get caught up. But we had so much more happen mm-hmm. and still happening. So we feel a part two is appropriate and who knows, we might even go on to a part three, but I don't know. Um, so I hope not. I hope that well, we're at the end of our road and I know. we can just give updates throughout. So we've, we've been going through a lot here in the household and, um, Angela, uh, is gonna share a lot of what she's been going through Mm -hmm. and um you know hopefully it'll resonate with some of you uh but that's what's coming up but i think uh, for right now we just need to go ahead and get this episode started with our intro intro music roll it Do you have that kind of perfect moment picture? Kind of that thing that you always want to remember, but you want to remember it in maybe a little bit more of a classy way. Have you ever thought about taking that thing instead of a picture being a painting? Well, you can do that with paintyourlife.com. We heard about paintyourlife.com and we actually got a picture from our honeymoon, a super memorable picture one that we um, posed for, and it's this awesome like beach picture. And we had paintyourlife.com paint it. And to be honest with you, we were completely blown away. I mean, truly amazed at this artist's ability to capture every detail from the original photo. I mean, if you're going to do this as a gift, what an amazing, meaningful gift. We're actually thinking about even getting another one. If you want to give a truly meaningful gift, you've got to try paintyourlife.com. You can have an original painting of yourself or your children or your pet or, uh, you know, just a memorable moment at a price you can now afford from paintyourlife.com. This is a true painting. It's done by hand by a world-class artist created from a favorite photo. It makes a perfect gift. Maybe anniversary gift for your parents, huh? Or Mother's Day coming up. You can choose the artist you want to work with and admire uh, and, and you actually work with them throughout the process until every detail is perfect. There's no risk. If you don't love it, your money's refunded. It's great for decor. It's a work of art and get your memories transformed into something that's going to be cherished forever. Make a truly special gift for someone you love or for yourself right now as a limited time offer, get 30% off your painting. That's right. 30% off and free shipping to get this special offer. Text the word baby to seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine. That's baby to seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine. Text B-A-B-Y to 797979. Message and data rates may apply. Okay, officially back in the studio. Hello, Baby Studios, which is just really our house. It's, it's just an office. We've got some <laughs> microphones and no, it's, it's a nice little studio, but it's, it's not a real studio. It's just, uh, just us mm-hmm. and we're chilling. Hey, before we get into the bulk of, uh, you know, the post weaning stuff today, because you know, I love doing it. Can I just, can I just talk about, well, first of all, I I would like to say, I think we're going to do like one or two little listener feedbacks because we haven't done it Mm -hmm. for for a little while. And also I got to bring this up. I love my current events. So let's do a little current events. Here we go. You said you had no current events. I lied. Okay. Current events. (laughs) Okay. Thanks for indulging me. Um, Kim Kardashian celebrates CBD and meditation themed baby shower. What? With Chrissy Teigen and Paris Hilton. What do you think about this? And we should say that my oh my, we've had quite a lot of experience with CBD lately. Yes. And uh, and even uh, marijuana, but uh, not like we've been smoking marijuana. No. But. It's been on our radar lately. Yeah, just because we were doing so much research and, and trying to figure out, like, is that a way to naturally calm what I was going through? <laughs> right. Yeah. So Because so many people recommended it to me. Out here in California, it's completely legal. Even recreationally, it's legal. Yeah. So we have been to, like, four weed stores mm-hmm. in a matter trying of Trying to, like, understand what 
each thing does. You're way more educated on it than I am. Yeah, gotten a lot of different products and stuff. But uh, anyhow, so how funny is this? I actually got a PR package this week of yeah. CD, CBD bath bombs. And didn't one of them have THC in them? I believe so. I think yeah. so, yeah. So, so funny, speaking of bath bombs and like, you know, because we, we cover the relationship stuff here a little bit too. We were in the store the other day, the weed store, and, and they had bath bombs in there. And we were like, bath bombs? What is this? Like, how, how's that work? And the dude was like, I don't know, but I can tell you that my girlfriend's a lot nicer to me once once she gets out of the bath. <laughs> so, And he was being totally serious. Oh, 100% serious. Yeah, it was funny. He was like, she's mean when she gets in the bath and when she's out, she's nice to me. So I, you know. I, I swear give, by him. I give him five stars. Yeah. I'd be like, we need to get some of those. I'm going to sneak him in Angela's bath. Whatever. She won't even know it. <laughs> Whatever. I do a vino baths right now. So that's another yeah. story. Yeah. Anyhow. So funny. It's it, it feels so trendy right now, doesn't it? CBD. It does feel very trendy. It, you know, and while it is trendy, um, if it works, that's awesome. It's it's really not trendy though. It's been around since like forever. I don't know why, but it seems like it's just like really, um, just. I mean, there's no other word for it. Trendy though, right now, it just feels like people have. I, I think I it's just know. it's just more talked about and it's less taboo and it's you know more accepted uh-huh well cbd doesn't get you high no let's, let's I know all that. just be clear about that right uh matter of fact we had my mom try some cbd lotion the other day and she was very freaked out to oh try my gosh it. she was like just not going to do it but, uh-huh but you made her do it yeah and and she thought maybe she felt better from it she had some some uh hand and joint pain anyway i have i gotta follow up with her i gave yeah, her i want to know how that worked that hand cream for her anyway back back to this a cbd themed Baby shower. I, I mean, I don't, I don't. So whose baby shower was it? It's Kim Kardashian's. Okay. Cause she's delivering via surrogate, right? Uh-huh. Yep. So what was themed about it? <laughs> oh man. Um, they gave out slides and took part in a sound bath. Baby blue colored decorations placed all around a uh, name game. better way to celebrate than have a little cbd <laughs> it's just supposed to be a nice and chill uh way to uh, have a baby shower that's hilarious actually i actually don't understand like what everyone was... have a puff and put on some oil <laughs> is that what it was yeah i mean they had like they had cbd party favors and you know things to do look like look, looks like there's yoga there are they like getting ready to launch a CBD line or Relaxation. something? Relaxation. You know what? That's that's not a bad thought. What? That that's probably what's about to they happen. Had massages there. Tea ceremony with crystals. Okay. Ugh. Um. I'm just not a crystals fan at all. Right, right, right. Not to be confused with a fast food place. Or our friend Crystal. <laughs> Not a fan of her. No, not a fan <laughs> of her listening. at all. <laughs> uh, anyhow, okay, well, really, I'm I'm done talking about that. Okay, um, well, thank you for enlightening us. You're welcome. I just thought it was interesting. Yeah. Um. Hey, let's let's just play listener feedback or two before we kind of get into this because we haven't done it. Okay. What do you say? Yeah, let's do it. All right, hold on. Let me let me go fetch one. Hi, Matt and Angela. Hope all is well. First off, I want to say I have been a listener since day one. Uh, Angela, you and I were pregnant at the same time. Our baby girls are about a week apart. Ours was born just before Christmas. So I uh, want to say thank you for all you guys do. I, I love listening to the episodes. It's just so refreshing to listen to, you know, other other parents that are going through some of the same stuff. And, and it's been great to follow along. So, um, but a question that I have is related to child care. So curious what you guys have done, if you guys um, use a nanny, how you went about finding one, if you use babysitters, um, friends or family. Uh, we we kind of have gone, started to go the care.com route to find some other babysitters. Um, and, and we've started to, we use my mom right now for full-time nanny care, but we're going to start looking at some, uh, some uh, either daycare or maybe a, an early type of preschool. So curious what you guys do, how you're navigating that and any tips you have. All right. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Well, thanks for calling in. I didn't catch a name. I was just going to say, I didn't, I don't think she said her name. Yeah. Well, whoever you are, mystery caller, thanks for calling. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Um, 
Yeah. Okay. So as far as what we've done for childcare, um, she mentioned care.com, which actually they have been a sponsor on the show before, mm-hmm. right? And actually one of our friends uses care.com. Yeah. So we know mm-hmm. they are legit. That is something that we would say, yeah, go and check out care.com. They're, they're, they're not uh, one of today's sponsors, but um, uh, we've heard people having great success with them. Yeah. Um, what we have done actually is uh, through a friend that we knew, we found a part-time nanny. Yeah, actually, um, our friend Julie Solomon, she's a a fellow podcaster yeah, as well. Yeah, what's her podcast called? The Influencer Podcast. Yeah, go listen to her. She's she's really great. Super, super uh, intelligent with uh, influencer and, and social media. So she was using this nanny since her son Camden was, I think, five weeks old. And it just so happened that when I was pregnant, her nanny was losing her other job. So it worked out perfectly that we could nanny share. And so that's what we've been doing since Kenny was about... Not six six or eight months, weeks? yeah. Oh, wait, six or eight weeks? Yeah, you were on Timeless when oh, she right, started right, right. in February. Yeah. I remember it was February. Yeah, so she's been with us over a year now. Her name's Sylvia. Yeah. yeah. Um, we love her. Yeah, and... she works with us like three days a week. Um, we use the... her about 16 hours a week. Yeah. Which it's... is quite honestly not enough. Not enough. Yeah. She's here in the afternoons for three days. Uh, it's really, really tough though. I mean, between my kind of wacky schedule and, and Angela you know, trying to run a full on business between her, her blog and her um, social media and her YouTube. And mm-hmm. it's a lot. Um, we, we need more, we need more help. It's, it's hard because before I got, well, even while I was pregnant, before I had Kenny, I was working seriously about 80 hours a week. Yes, I was. And to then cut that down to fit that into 16 hours of childcare, it's really hard. So that's when my mom actually moved out was back in September to help us. Mm-hmm. And um, she's been gone the last six weeks because she had to go back to Ohio and have a hysterectomy, but she comes back on Wednesday and I could not be more thrilled. Um, <laughs> we are sad. We, had, we did recently have to let Sylvia go because we're getting ready to relocate to Canada for Matt's project that we're getting ready to move for. But my mom is going with us. Um, but it is sad because Kenny's known her since the beginning and yeah. she loves her and they yeah. they love each other. And yeah. so it's it's sad. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's our, that's how we do it. Um, as for babysitters, we have a really good friend, Crystal, that we use. Yeah. We just really have a it. friend. And uh, thankfully my mom, you know? Yeah. And Angela's mom is coming back. And so obviously she is pretty much like our full-time nanny grandma, uh, once yeah. she comes back here. Um, so that's how we do it. Uh, yeah, it, it's tough. We've never had to go like the daycare route. Um, I guess like Fortunately, you know, we haven't had to do that, Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I'm not knocking it though either because, you know, people work and you have to. And I also think it's probably a great way to socialize. I was just going to say that. Socialize the kids. I mean, honestly. She would love it. McKinley would absolutely. She loves other kids so much. I, I, I do think that she she would i mean I she's a little social butterfly honestly maybe we should consider that like one day a week just to do the social thing the only drawback is obviously she's around a lot of other germs and sicknesses and yep. that's a whole other discussion whether that's good or bad i don't yeah. i don't know maybe maybe it's actually good she gets a little exposure to this stuff um but maybe that's something we could we could consider she does get exposure because um our nanny does she's here three afternoons a week so she takes her to the park three afternoons a week and then we found a little indoor play place close to us that we take her and let her play with other kids and she just loves it so much mm-hmm. she, she does. does she loves and then julie's um son camden comes over my mom will watch him from time to time and oh my gosh she loves him so <laughs> much yeah she's obsessed with camden but it's kind of tough but that that's like our setup we don't you know, prior to her, Angela's mom coming out, we don't live near family. Mm-mm. We don't have any family in Los Angeles. So, um, these last six weeks have been hard because we got spoiled with my mom being here. Yeah. And with me being sick, it's just, it's been tough on us. Yes. Because yes. I, if, had I been in a normal condition, it wouldn't have been, I would, we would have been fine. Yeah. But because I've just not been myself, right. it's, it's been tough. Well, uh, before we get into you not being yourself, let's listen to maybe one more voicemail and then we'll get into it. What do you say? Yep. Hey, Matt and Angela. This is Brittany. I listen to Hello Baby. Um, And I got y'all's phone number off of um, the episode Screen Time, which, of course, y'all probably know. 
But I just think it's so cool that you guys would allow your listeners to call and leave messages and feedback. And so I just wanted to say that I really enjoy Hello Baby. And I really enjoyed Hello Bump. I think you guys are wonderful parents. Matt, I have watched you on 90210. And then, Angela, I found you through Matt's page. And my um, name is Brittany Blackburn. I'm sure that you remember me, hopefully, because I comment on a bunch of your stuff. And I just think you guys are amazing, great parents. I love your Christian values, and I think y'all's episodes are not only informative, but very down-to-earth and very hilarious. So I just wanted to say, keep up the good work, and I will talk to y'all on social media. Bye. Well, thanks, Brittany. That was sweet. I know Brittany very well through social media. Well, I feel like I know her, but I've never met her before. Um, But that was very sweet. Yeah. I have, I like know my OGGs. Like, I feel like I know, know them, you know? <laughs> hey, thanks for taking the time to call in. We really appreciate it. And thanks for all the, your kind words. Yes. Uh, it's very, very, so sweet. Very nice of you. Yes. <sighs> well, <clears throat> shall we then get into the bulk of what we wanted to talk about today? <sighs> Let's do it. I, I will say that um, when we came in to sit down, here and do this, Angela said, I'm not looking forward to this. And, uh, she, um, actually recorded a YouTube video as well, which I, I don't think is going to be up by the time that you guys hear this, but I'll look for that on Friday. I think Yeah, look for that on her YouTube channel in the coming week or so. That's actually why I'm not looking forward to doing this because I just rehashed it yesterday. Yeah. It's tough. You know? I mean, it's tough to talk about all this stuff. And when you're still sort of going through it. I mean, you're still sort of, I don't know if suffering is the right word, but you're still going through it. It's still trying for you. So to sit yeah. here and hash it up and talk about it, it it's just it's unsettling. Just I, I understand that I've gone through some stuff myself in the last year, a little, little anxiety and depression. I, I, I understand it. Um, and at this point I'm, I'm glad that I did cause I can more <clears throat> better. I can, I can, empathize and sympathize with Angela better. But um, it's been a bit of a trying time. So I guess what we should have done is probably gone back and listened to where we finished. I know where we finished. Where, where did we finish the last episode of post weaning Depression? Which, so it was before um, things got really bad. Okay. Well, specifically, what was that? Do you remember? It was before your mom came out to visit. Before my mom came out to visit. Okay. But my dad had been here and all this kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Your dad had been here. Yes. Okay. So, so people know that. Cause this just went up two weeks ago. People know that we had had some hiccups mm -hmm. and, and a very, very quick, quick. Uh, if you didn't listen to that episode, um, Angela had been experiencing what we think post weaning depression, but going through. Well, I was diagnosed with it. Yeah. <clears throat> lost a lot of weight. Uh, and just having a real hard time, went to several doctors, did so many different blood tests, talked about hormone levels, talked about, you know, just all types of different things. Vitamin levels, you name it, everything. So you did, you did, you've done blood tests, you've mm -hmm. done stool tests, mm -hmm. you've done, and um, eventually kind of came down to, this has got to be a postpartum depression, post weaning depression. Um, and we're saying post weaning because she had just finished breastfeeding a couple of months ago. Uh, so we're sort of calling it that, but whatever. It's it's all in the category of postpartum depression is what it is. Yeah, my very first doctor's appointment, actually, he told us that it was post weaning depression. Yeah. But instead of listening to him about that, I went on a whole journey of functional medicine, um, gynecology, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get the hormones situated. Supplements. Oh my gosh, the supplements. I can't even imagine how many supplements I've bought throughout this process. It's crazy. Angela and I are both not fans of taking really any medication, but yeah. especially prescription and hard drugs, things like that. That's yeah. just not our thing. So well, we, we just always try to treat things naturally first. Right. It's just our preference. And so you did weeks and weeks of trying to do natural stuff, which is why I mentioned the CBD stuff because CBD is, was part of the natural, the natural ways that we were trying to treat some of the, the lack of sleep. Yeah. Insomnia. My first visit, um, my doctor wanted to 
talk antidepressants and I would not even yeah, humor that conversation. conversation. Would yeah. not even hear of it. Right. He did give me a prescription for Ativan. I think I talked about that last episode um, for sleep. I used it a lot in the past two months, um, not every single night. And I never took it preemptively. Like I never took it before going to bed. Mm -hmm. I would wait until I would wake up in the middle of the night and then I would take it is what I would do. And you were pretty much waking up every single night. I woke up every single night for 30 days straight and I'm still waking up. That's still an issue. But now I'm actually able to fall back asleep mm -hmm. most nights. Okay. So I think when we last talked to you guys, um, Angela had had sort of a basically her first panic attack in the middle of the night. Uh, yeah, I think I had had two at that point. And we brought my dad out there. Fortunately, he was able to come out. Um, we kind of got you on the path to, you know, just having a little uh, relief and stress. Yeah. Um, I felt good the last episode. Like we were making strides in the right direction and yeah. we figured it out and we were going to get this situated. We were getting counseling you know, which was emotionally helping yeah. just to talk about things. And yeah. we felt like we were on, on a roll. We felt like we were on the way to healing and it was a small episode. And then mm -hmm. little did we know everything sort of came crashing back down on us mm -hmm. after we recorded that first episode. I actually said this today that it feels like I take five steps forward and then 10 steps back. I think you're not doing that anymore, but I think at one point you did. Yeah. And that's what we can talk about today so let's let's go over that timeline then okay so the last time that we talked to y'all um we were just on the path of we're going to tra try to treat this naturally i do have the ativan i'll take it when i need to sleep kind of thing and and we're going to get out of this like it's gonna i'm gonna get leveled out i you know my hormones are okay everything like that well um scroll to <laughs> that's not the right word fast forward to yeah. um later like a couple days after we talked to you guys, um, Matt's mom and stepdad came out to visit us, and it was a it was a good visit. They it was the first time his stepdad has gotten to come out since I was pregnant, and it was it was an enjoyable time. They got in on like a Tuesday or a Wednesday, um, and I still didn't sleep the whole time they were here. Yeah, didn't sleep at all. That following Monday, I had experienced yet another bad night of sleep, i.e. no sleep. And that morning, I couldn't get out of bed. I literally couldn't get out of bed. And that came in and said, because at that point, I was experiencing really bad depression in the mornings. But then by lunchtime, it was burning off, is the, it was what you were saying. Yeah, it was like Angela's body was so broken down. Depleted. Depleted and broken down. Um, it's just everything... She couldn't handle it. I mean, she wasn't sleeping. She wasn't, she was losing weight. She wasn't retaining nutrients in my, that's what I believe. Um, and we, we thought we were on the way out of it. Uh, but it turns out we weren't. Mm -hmm. It was just going to get worse. It was getting unfortunately. worse. Yeah. So that Monday, um, I was in bed and his mom, you and your stepdad were taking care of Kenny because I just couldn't even function. And you came in and you were begging me to go for a walk. You're like, just get out in the sun. You feel better when you get outside. And I do. I I, I did. Every time I got outside, I felt better. Yeah. And every time I exercised, I felt better. Uh -huh. So we got out and we walked around the neighborhood and we walked to a nearby park and everything was making me cry. I mean, you would look at me and I would cry. Um, I, we got to the park and it was early in the morning. Nobody was there. And I just was so out of control of my emotions that I just said, we've got it. Something's got to give. Angela and I went up to the park by ourselves because she was in such a bad place. And I, you know, tried basically forced her to get out of the house. Um, but you know, just to have a little us time, uh, my parents took the baby and we went up there and, um, and, and Angela, by the way, yeah, we've said this on the prior podcast, I believe, but she's not a crier. She's not mm -mm. one of those emotional. She's really not much of an emotional person. Um, but I could not control my emotions. Mm -hmm. Couldn't. You, you were so, so down so in the dumps, bad. so dark. Things were so dark for you. So dark. I was feeling, I was having very dark thoughts. I was, 
everything that I, every thought and emotion that I had, I was relating back to McKinley. Mm -hmm. So now I can clearly see that it was postpartum Mm -hmm. related. Um, When you say, you know, and you and I really haven't discussed how detailed you want to go, but when you say dark thoughts, I mean, I wasn't suicidal. I don't want to say, make it sound like that. Okay. Um, I, I felt like the thought that I kept having in my head is like, what is the purpose of all of this? Like, why am I here? Like, I've never had thoughts like that before in my life. Like I am a Christian. I fully 100% believe that God put me here on earth for a, a reason and he's got a plan for me and, um, you know, all of those things. But that's the thought I kept hearing in my head over and over and over again. Like, what is the purpose? Like, why, why? And it was, I couldn't control it. I could, like, I would try to shut it off and I could not control it. And um, I just, it, it was just so overwhelming. And I just remember sitting at the park and crying and saying, you've got to get me into the doctor. We got to go back to my primary doctor. Nothing else is working. I don't know what else to do. I feel so hopeless. Mm-hmm. And um, you did, you called the doctor. He couldn't see me to the next day. And I was like, that's not going to work. <laughs> Yeah. That is not going to work. It's not going to work. And, and, you know, to have Angela talking like that, like so, um, uh, adamant on getting to the doctor that day because she was in such a dark place was scary. You know, uh, I started looking for postpartum depression, post weaning depression, specific doctors. And we found a couple, Mm -hmm. um, I called and left a message on one. They never even called us back. Didn't call back. Uh, and then I called our counselor who we do regularly see yeah, and said, hey, this is what's going on. Because Angela didn't even really have enough in her to make a phone call or to talk to the counselor herself over the phone. Uh, and she gave me a little suggestion on, you know, maybe we should get to a regular doctor. You know, maybe we should look into some medication. Um, and I think we might have scheduled a a session, right? Or did, yeah. had we just had one? No, we we scheduled one we for the very one. next day. Okay. We scheduled one for the very next day to see her. And she was coming to our house um, to pray with us, pray over our house, everything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that was planned. I actually scheduled that with her. Um, but but that then that ended up not happening until after my parents had left. Yes, because they left Monday night. It was that night they left? Yeah, they left that night. So um, right. Matt called our primary, couldn't get us in. I called back a couple hours later. I said, is there any cancellations? And I was like, I am just in a really, really bad place. I'm going through postpartum. And I think the nurse could hear the desperation in my voice. And Mm -hmm. she said, can you, can you come at the end of the day? And I said, yes, I will be there. And so, um, his mom and dad stayed with Kenny and we went at the end of the day and I was so nervous going in there. But the thing that was going on with me that I need to explain is that I've constantly felt like I had an electric current running through my body. And that's the only way I know how to describe it is that I felt like I had electricity starting at the bottom of my feet and running through my body, like this nervous electric buzz constantly going through my body. And I would feel it on the top of my head too, remember? Mm -hmm. And it was just nonstop. And I just thought there's something wrong with me nerve wise. And you're like, that's anxiety. And I'm like, no, it's not anxiety. Like, I don't, my thoughts were just not rational. Sure. I couldn't rationalize anything at that yeah, point. Yeah, of course. You, when you have anxiety and depression, it, you can't. You can't rationalize anything. And to anyone who's not had that or not experienced that, I know that some of this sounds hard to believe or like hard to really understand, but it's something that just takes over your your body and your mind like nothing else. It is just the weirdest thing. Um, but I will say though, that day again, it started to lift, it started to lift uh, yeah. about lunchtime. I mm-hmm. mean, we, we had some, we had some prayers going, we had some friends praying for us. Um, and again, it started to lift and, and about that afternoon, I mean, your body was still worn down cause you hadn't been sleeping, but mm-hmm. the, uh, the thoughts, the, the overwhelming darkness had lifted. Mm-hmm. It did. Um, but then I would get close to nighttime and I would get fearful. Uh-huh. Because I yeah. knew I wasn't going to sleep. You know, even to the point of, I believe that night we had a friend over, right? 
And we were like dancing in the kitchen and like having a good time and oh, everything. Oh, that was the night before. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, it was the night before. So it's weird how this thing, it comes and goes in, yeah. in these waves. Yeah. So then. So uh, we went to our doctor, our primary doctor. Yeah. And. Um, that, that day, yeah. Yeah, that day. And he said, you know, what's going on? And I started to explain it to him. And I just, I broke down. I started crying. And he just looked at me and he's like, you are suffering and you are suffering unnecessarily. Why are you doing this? And I didn't really have an answer for it other than I just, I was scared. I was scared to take medication. I was scared to, I was just, I just wanted to do things naturally. And he just said, you don't have a choice at this point. And you really felt that way too. I didn't have a choice at that point. I did. You know, we had tried so much stuff naturally. Um, and I, the the fear of taking any new medication is very strong and very real when your body is so broke mm-hmm. and you know you feel so awful there's a, a fear of adding something new you know possible side effects that mm-hmm. you just can't even think about your body feeling even worse and like what that would do to you physically and mentally uh, so there's so much fear that surrounds taking a new medication mm-hmm. and i had that and you had that oh i had that and in this doctor session, he said, maybe we should talk about some antidepressants. Mm-hmm. And um, that's what we did. That's what we did. We, we talked about that that's what he had to do for his wife when she went through this exact same thing. And, and by the way, his wife started the postpartum depression three years no. No, a year and a half. A year and a half after uh, she had given birth. Yes. And he said, this is perfectly normal. I've seen this before. I see it all the time. Women experience postpartum depression, you know, typically up to th- up to three years to three after years. birth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he went through the different medication options with us and um, he chose one that he thought was going to be the right one for us, for me, I should say. And we left and I think I felt mixed emotions because mm-hmm. I was so scared I was of taking it. But sure. I went and got it filled that night. Yeah. And your mom and, and stepdad left. Um, they flew back to Ohio that night. And I couldn't bring myself to take it. Right. I could not bring myself to start the medication. I was so scared. And I had yet another bad night. Yeah. I mean, we decided, okay, let's not take the medication. Let's just go another night, see what happens. We've got some stuff here kind of in our back pocket and uh, we've got some some Ativan to help and um, I had a terrible night. It was horrible. Mm-hmm. I woke up that, not woke up, but when I, you woke up that morning, I was in the darkest place that I've ever been in my life, mm-hmm. ever. And I couldn't, physically get out of bed. I was begging Matt to call somebody over to help take care of McKinley because I needed him with me. I felt s- despair. That's the word I, fe- uh, that, that's the best word to describe. I was begging Matt to take me to the hospital because I was convinced I was having a nervous breakdown. I couldn't stop crying. It was awful. <laughs> When I was pregnant, I first discovered third love because, hello, your boobs change when you're pregnant and also when you're breastfeeding. And the reason that I loved third love is because they offer a perfect fit and they have more sizes than any other brands, which includes their signature half cup size. How nice is that? They're so convenient. You can skip the trip to the mall and do their online fit finder order try on at home. It's so easy. All you have to do is hop onto their website and use their Fit Finder quiz. You just answer a few simple questions to find your perfect fit in 60 seconds. Over 12 million women have taken the quiz to date. I'm one of them. It's actually fun. Takes less than a minute to complete. And did you know that your breast shape matters when finding a good fit? It totally does. Third Love helps you identify your breast size and shape and then find styles that fit your body. 
Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now they're offering my listeners 15% off of your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash baby now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off of your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash baby for 15% off today. Well, hold on. Let me clarify. You weren't begging me to take you to the hospital. Yeah. You, you, we were talking about it and you were questioning, do I need to go to the hospital? I think I might need to. In my mind, I was like asking you to take me. You weren't, you weren't asking me to take you because if you were actually asking me to take you, I, I would have, it's not like I was saying, no, 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 we're not going to do it. But you were saying, I think I need to go to the hospital. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm like, I'm, I'm either having a nervous breakdown or I'm about to, um, And that was really, really scary. It was so scary. And I think that what made it worse for me is that we had just watched Nashville and Juliet Barnes, which is Hayden Panettiere's character, had just come out of rehab for postpartum depression. So in my mind, I was like, I'm just as bad as she is and I need to go to rehab. (laughs) Which is so unfortunate that we had just watched that because obviously it's a TV show and it's dramatized. Had I not seen that, I don't think I I would have gotten so worked up that day. But I truly believed that I was every bit as bad as off as her character was and that I needed, I needed hospitalization. Yeah. That's, that's what in my head, that's what it was. And there was another thing that, that you had said, and I don't know if this is okay for me to share or not, but we have a gun in our house for protection. And Angela has said, I I want you to hide the gun uh, and just make sure it's locked up away from where I could possibly. And it wasn't because I was suicidal. I get it. It's because I got so scared of my thoughts that I got so scared that I might get crazy enough to think about that. Mm -hmm. That's why I I asked you to, to make sure it was like out of, out of sight, out out of of mind. Out of mind. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't access it. No, no, it scared me. I I understand that. I, I, I really understand that thought I, I didn't think that you were suicidal in that no moment. i wasn't but i was scared of my thoughts i because i have been on that same exact wavelength that i have almost done the same thing back when i kind of was going through some stuff and i had the same same stuff i've had the same thoughts so i was right on board with you and of course i did you know lock it up good hit it away from you know where angela could even find it and to, just so it eased her mind that she didn't have to have that be a part of her dark thoughts um, but that was a scary, scary morning. It was horrible. And you I don't... actually called the doctor back that morning. Mm-hmm. We did because we, we just wanted, I don't remember why we called him actually. I, I, you know, I had, I, I don't know. I had called like Angela said, you know, please tr- get in touch with the doctor. I ended up calling like three times. I'm sure they were annoyed with me. Um, but I finally ended up talking to him. I think about like mixing the, medication Ativan with it that's what it was with the Ativan yes with, with the did you mention which medication you were given no okay. i don't know can we do that i mean why not i guess so um i'm i he was get, he gave me lexapro is what lexapro, he gave me yeah. yeah it's a it's an ssri it's one of the traditional antidepressant medications um that's been around for a while so we were asking questions about that uh that night and i don't remember if you're, if you're, if the, if it had lifted again by lunchtime or not, I think it, I no, think it always gets a little better. What happened was my aunt called me and you got Siri going on in your watch right now. Oh, you're right. Uh, yes. Your aunt. My aunt called my aunt Gina. Um, and she's, as Matt put it, a little bit of a bulldog, <laughs> but she, in, in a good way. Yeah. But she called me and, um, she's always been wise counsel in my life. Always. And she dealt with some postpartum herself and she just called me and said, you are so sleep deprived that you can't even see straight. Take an Ativan right now. I don't care what time it is. Get something to eat, take an Ativan and go to sleep. And she wanted Angela to take a full, a full Ativan because like I said, Angela and I are always very, very conservative with medications and typically, uh, I mean, I say we, but we're talking about her. So she always cuts these medications in halves and quarters Mm -hmm. and you know just enough to just get by and to not be completely succumbed by the medication yeah um but anyway her like i'm that person who has a headache so i take a single tylenol yeah to see if that works so her aunt was like enough of this crap take the ativan take the full amount you know knock yourself out put yourself to sleep your body 
is in such desperate need of sleep. Yeah. Uh, and and naturally, it's not working. You have to, you know, if if you go to the hospital because we were talking about what do we do if we go to the hospital? She said, if you go to the hospital, they're going to do the same exact thing. They're going to put the same medication in you at a much, much higher dosage. They're yeah. going to knock you out. They're going to make you sleep and then reassess. Yeah. And she was right. So why not just be in the comfort of your own home, eat some lunch, you know, watch some TV and take a little medication, which by the way, this, this Ativan is a medication that A, calms you down and a, a, as a side effect makes you tired. Um, not in a weird way, in, mm-hmm. a, in a, actually a very... It helps me sleep A very calmly. calm way. I mean, yeah. they, they they give people Ativan. When people go to the hospital with a nervous breakdown or a panic attack or something like that, Ativan is given. It calms people down. Yeah. So that's what I did. I took a I took an Ativan, had some lunch, and I slept for a while. You did. And it was a I wonderful, needed it wonderful so bad. thing. And um, our counselor came over that night to do a session with us. Um and it was time for me to yeah. take my first Lexapro. During the day, while Angela was sleeping, and, and, and it was just, it was so incredible. I felt, just the fact that she was sleeping, I felt so, like, much happiness. Did you? Well, yeah, just happiness and joy that, like, she was actually sleeping and getting, you know, her body was recovering. You know, I'm just, like, literally, like, the picturing just, you know, your body, like, coming alive and, like, you know, the currents running, like just, you know, Mm -hmm. this, just this word picture, this, what you would think of as this healing going on and taking place just by having a little sleep. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had also contacted your mom yeah, and she was actually on vacation in Florida with Angela's dad. And I said, I don't know what's left on your vacation here, but I, I think we could really, really use some help. I think it would be really great you know we're we're struggling right now um it was more so not even that it was more so the fact that you had to go to chicago well uh, yeah i was getting to that um uh, this was like a wednesday i think i had to leave it was for tuesday sh- for chicago on friday mm-hmm. i couldn't get out of that and um we had no other you know babysitter or a- any other family member available um other than angela's mom who, like I said, was in Florida on vacation. And I said, I think we, we really, we have to have some sort of help. I don't know, you know, A, I think it's going to make Angela feel a lot better to have someone else here. We're going through a real, real rough stage. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, she was already like worried to death about me as it was. Yeah. You know, some, we could use some help taking care of McKinley because obviously uh, McKinley's a full-time job. Yeah. And um, again, I had to go to Chicago. And at this point, could not fathom leaving Angela by herself. I could not fathom. I couldn't, I couldn't have done I mean, it. She couldn't even take care of herself, let alone take care of a baby, which, you know, again, in theory is, is causing this whole thing. I know it's like a weird statement to say, and we can like follow up on that uh, because I feel like there's a difference in, in the postpartum depression and having the anxiety and depression over the baby is not it doesn't mean you love the baby any less or you don't want to be around the baby. Well, in some cases, yes, because, but, but it's, it's about the stress. Mm -hmm. It's about the stress that the responsibility Mm -hmm. causes, Mm -hmm. not, not McKinley herself. Yeah. It's not like, I don't love my kid. It's not like, so for anybody out there questioning like, oh, does she not, it's not that at all. And maybe that sounds confusing, but it's not that, we don't, you know, she doesn't love her kid or, you know, she doesn't want to be around her. It's, it's, it's almost just the stress that she causes simply by being a by, baby, by being a baby and by yeah. needing uh, the attention. Yeah. The, tw- the, the care it's, it's the attention and the care that Angela mentally is not able to provide. And that adds a whole another layer of stress and it's a big circle and there's a whole ton of guilt. And I'm sure we can talk about that too, that yeah. Angela's going through all at the same time because she knows that she's not able to care for her, for, for McKinley well at the, at yeah. this time when she's going through this. And there's a massive amount of guilt that uh-huh. comes with that too. Uh-huh. And we'll get to all that. But um, I just wanted to throw that in there. So I, I got the flights going. Your mom was coming out. And like I had the no next idea. Day. That was completely unbeknownst to me. Yeah, you were sleeping. I had no idea. Um, but when I did wake up, you came in and told me that my mom was coming the next day. And, um, Mm. and that was a reassuring feeling to me because my parents coming out were meant 
just an extra set of hands and a little bit of a safety net. Yeah. And, and not to mention, like when you don't feel good other than your spouse, who do you want there? Your mom. Like, that's just how it is. <laughs> right. So that night, um, our counselor came and it was a little bit of an intervention between you and her. You sat there and you said, you're going to take your medication. <laughs> Well, yeah. I mean, look, it wasn't about that. It's not like she was coming over to make Angela take medication. No, it was that, just no. perfect timing. It was a it was a counseling session. She came over. We we talked about, you know, mentally and emotionally and spiritually, you know, how to heal and how to help. But I actually had no plans on doing this. But in in that session, I was like, do you know what? There's a fear surrounding this medication and the side effects that it might have. While we have our counselor here with us and we're able to talk about it and it's, you know, roughly 8 p.m. at night and not 11 p.m., um, we have time to take the medication now. We can sit here, anything that you might be feeling, we can talk about it. We have a third party here who's great at talking about stuff. Uh, we can, you know, have a couple hours of just relaxing television that um, you're not going to have to take the medication, roll over, close your eyes and try to go to sleep. And then, you know, dwell on what am I feeling? What's that feeling in my body? Oh, and then giving anxiety because we've talked about before when you do have anxiety and you do have depression, it's almost like you fear the night. And I know Angela was going through that too. Yes. You, big time. you fear the night you fear you're supposed to be sleeping. There's something about the night. It's, it's the darkness that surrounds you. Uh, you, you, you can't really see outside, you know, so everything sort of closes in on you and, and the nighttime just does, it does that. And so eventually when it's time to go to bed and everyone in your house is asleep and I'm sleeping and the lights are off and Angela's sitting there, not able to sleep, only dwelling on her thoughts. I don't think I'm saying anything that sounds too crazy. You guys, it, it all makes sense. Um, you have a fear of the night. And, mm -hmm. and, and so when you're taking a new medication like that and you're fearing already, um, that could drive you crazy. So I was like, you know what? Why don't you go ahead and take the medication? Mm -hmm. We can chat about it. We'll watch TV afterwards. It'll be great. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're here. You know, if something wacky happens, we'll go to the hospital. It's everything's fine. And, um, and she did. She worked up the courage and, and took it. And um, you were scared. I was. You teared up a little bit. Yeah. Um, but you did it. I was really proud of you for doing it um, because I think we were just, we were at our breaking point. I keep saying we, I mean, it's not we, it's, it's Angela, but I have always what felt like. What do you like, mean? You were like right there with me the whole time. Well, I, like, just, I just feel like we're, we're in this together. I mean, 100% everything, we are. everything that I go through and the, everything that you go through, it's, it's really, I mean, it's, we go through it together. Yeah. So. Yeah. And guess what guys? <sighs> I lived. <laughs> She lived. I mean, no I side effects. No I mean, side other... effects. I mean, not not from that first dose. Well, you, you you felt you felt a little drowsy, which we all knew you were going yeah. to the first several days. It's it's so common. So the first the first few days. So it he told my doctor told me that it's gonna take a couple of days before I start to feel any sort Anything. of like normal. But well, first no, no, few no. days, SSRIs typically take two no, three I meant, weeks. I meant like I don't mean like back to normal. I just meant like. Before you feel anything. Well, the first few days, I was really nauseous. I was really lethargic. Very, very lethargic. Very, yeah, yeah. Um, But I started it on a Tuesday, and I think that by Saturday night, I slept without needing out of van, mm -hmm. I think. Um, here's the thing. I am sleeping now. I've been on it for about two and a half weeks. I am sleeping now. And it's just now supposedly getting into Angela's system like full force. Yeah. They say it doesn't come in till like maybe three, four weeks to really be full force in your body. Yeah. The last two nights I haven't needed to take anything to sleep. I am able to go to, I've been always able to go to sleep, but it's that I wake up and then I stay up. I'm still waking up multiple, multiple times throughout the night, like a lot throughout the night, but I'm going back to sleep is, is the important thing. Um, I still wake up really early in the morning, like 6.45. I'm, I'm like awake for the day. Um, but that's way, that's a, that's like leaps and bounds compared to what I was going through. Well, here's what is cool about this medication, um, is that even at like day, maybe five or six, 
Angela started to, she was very kind of even, really not up and really not down, um, you know, in day like three, four, five. But I would say that even though she maybe wasn't sleeping through the night, by even day maybe five or six, the anxiety that that brings the next morning had started to taper off. Mm -hmm. You know, you weren't waking up in, in, in a panic and anxiety and you weren't waking up shaking anymore. Mm -hmm. From right. the anxiety, you weren't waking up feeling like you're going to have a nervous breakdown because you didn't sleep. No. Even by day five and six, even if you didn't get great sleep, you'd wake up and you'd say, I kind of feel a little crappy. I just didn't sleep good, but I don't have that mental breakdown thing. Right. Um, but I, I, by Saturday, I was definitely seeing improvements. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, on Sunday, um, while Matt was in Chicago, it was his last day there. Oh, right. Okay. So... Go, go to yeah now she's been on it started tuesday parents are out here i flew out to chicago on friday to do star wars celebration do some signings i, I briefly mentioned that so i'm out there by myself angela was going to go with me and decided not to obviously because of everything that had been going I'm so on glad i didn't go i am too even by friday though you had started to feel like a lot better yeah and you had you thought about coming out like but even sat like friday and saturday or saturday and sunday i was able to like feel pretty good take naps about. like yeah. i was taking naps I haven't been able to take a nap throughout this entire process and I like literally fall asleep and in the middle of the day, like I was doing that and I was, it, it was just like, it just felt like I was reclaiming my life a little bit. Yes. And, um, Sunday I was, I had fallen asleep out on the, out on our back patio, taken a nap and I woke up and I came inside and I had gotten some Gatorade and was drinking some Gatorade. I was playing with McKinley and I sat down in our chair and I looked at my mom and I tried to say the word Gatorade and I, I couldn't say it. And I'm like, that's weird. So then I started to text on my phone and I kept looking at my phone and I was trying to respond to my cousin and I kept saying, typing out the word only over and over and over again, only space, only space, only. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, what, why can't I, what is going on? So mom, my mom said something to me across the room. I was in the family room and she's in the kitchen and I couldn't respond to her. Like I phys like my, I couldn't get my words out. And she came over and she got down in front of my face and she's like, "Are you okay?" And she's kind of like laughing at this point because she thought I was like just being a little bit goofy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I can't." Like my ears felt like they were in tunnels. Like you know how the sound like kind of goes in. Mm -hmm. And um, I was like, "I don't know what's wrong with me." Like I couldn't get the words out, and she started freaking out. So she called you. Mm -hmm. And um, I was displaying every symptom of a stroke is what I was doing. It was extremely scary from my side as well. I'm in Chicago. I had just finished my day's work. I had come back to my hotel room. It was about 7, 7 7.30 my time. I was getting ready to um, buy myself some dinner and watch the, the, the last day of the Masters. Mm -hmm. Go Tiger Woods, by the way. <laughs> And um, I got this phone call from her mom saying, hey, Matt, Angela's acting very weird. She can't speak. Uh, what should I do? And I'm like, whoa, 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 what? My head was spinning at this point. Yeah. I'm like trying to figure out what's what's happening, what's going on. Why can't she talk? And she put me on the phone. Did I Was I talking to you? I don't really remember being able to talk to you. At that point. I don't think I could get any words out. Y you did. But. You could tell you were very like stunted. Yeah. Um, you know, you were very kind of like basic. Mm -hmm. So our next door neighbor is a doctor. So my mom ran next door to get him, but he wasn't home. And so she came back in and she just basically made the decision that she needed to take me to the emergency room because of the way I was acting. And I didn't fight her on it because I didn't know what was going on either. N well, I didn't even have the. Under, like I couldn't walk either. I tried to stand up and I couldn't like she was having to help me stand up like it was that bad. Yeah. So she took me to the emergency room and um, you're freaking out. You're in Chicago. You're trying everything you can to get home. So that day in Chicago, there was a pretty big snowstorm. Crazy enough. I had finished all my work Sunday. Technically, had there been any more flights, I could have gotten on a flight. But entire Chicago was shut down because of a crazy snowstorm. 
And every single way out of Chicago and even some of my castmates that were supposed to fly out that night also were canceled. I was literally stuck in Chicago, stuck in a hotel room, hearing about Angela having stroke-like symptoms from afar. I'm praying. I'm on my knees. I'm calling my mom. I'm calling my dad. I'm calling uh, my buddy who is a you know, pretty big prayer warrior and saying, hey, this is happening calling a couple of my castmates who are strong in the faith as well and ended up coming over to my hotel room. And of course we prayed and they brought me some food. God bless them. Um, while all this, all this was going on, but Angela's mom ended up taking her to emergency room. It was too packed out. So they mm-hmm. actually left to go to another one. By the time that you were driving to the emergency room, I felt normal. You felt a little more normal. I had a little bit of a headache, but I was normal. You were no, and you were speaking to me. You were with. Yeah, it. I, was to- were- I was totally. By the time I got, we got off the phone with you, and Mom said we're going to the hospital. I was able to slowly walk up the stairs by myself. Yeah. So I was slow. I was able. I was coming back around from the episode. So we go to the hospital um, because I had stroke-like symptoms. They got us in right away, um, but immediately they ruled out that it wasn't a stroke based off of you know like my vitals and my. Her and vitals they- were strong and good. In my pupils. And then they did an EKG on me too. I don't know if I told you that. And um, we really weren't there all that long. So they took me back. They did a, a, a CAT scan on my brain. Everything looked good. The The CT scan specifically is to rule out a stroke. Yes. And a burst aneurysm. Yes. Um, next day we go back into my primary doctor because they sent us home because everything checked out fine. And... My primary well, doctor. There was also, by the way, at the hospital, there was hesitation. And you were calling me, asking me what to do because they wanted to give you an MRI there as well. No, they wanted to do a CT scan with dye. With dye. Yeah. And your dad had just done a scan with dye for something the totally different mm-hmm. in, in Ohio and had a reaction to it. Had a horrible allergic reaction to it. And I unfortunately inherited his allergies. So I didn't want to go through that. I, because you didn't know if you would have a reaction yeah, or not. Yeah. And they were like 99.9% able to rule out that I didn't have an aneurysm and I didn't have a stroke. And they just believed that I had what they called a complicated migraine is what they described it as. So I left and I went and saw my primary doctor the next day. And he said the exact same thing. I think you had a complicated migraine. And Lexapro actually is a medication that people use to treat migraines, but it's not fully in your system yet. So he put his hand in a fist and he said, think of this as your migraine. And then he took his other hand, um, like fingers out and like wrapped it around and said, this, this is Lexapro blocking your migraine, but the fingers that are wrapping around your, your fist there, that's the symptoms of the migraine still getting past the Lexapro because it's, you know, you're still early in your treatment. It's almost like little like brain zaps. Yeah. So doing weird things to her body. Yeah. So um, that was Monday and Matt came home actually that Monday. Um, He he actually scheduled me for an MRI the very next day just because he wanted to fully rule out that I had no aneurysm. So the MRI was to rule out a ballooned aneurysm. That's when the vein just balloons but doesn't burst because on the CT they could see that nothing had burst but they couldn't completely rule out a ballooned aneurysm. So the MRI was going to rule this out. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to have the MRI with dye. Yes. (laughs) Which was a very stressful scenario. So I was freaking out about that. So that was the next day. I was freaking out all day long that I was going to have to go have this dye because, you know, my dad just had this reaction and this was actually a different dye. So our doctor said, take that out of your mind because it's a different dye. You're not going to have a reaction to this because you're not allergic to shellfish. Um, because that's that's how they they figure that out actually is this particular dye is if you're not allergic to shellfish. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, that's what he told me. Okay. So we get there and they're like, "Yeah, you don't need dye at all," and that was like the biggest blessing in the whole world. <laughs> and yeah. I like, I was scared about the MRI part of it a tiny bit about the tube like going in the tube, but not I'm not claustrophobic so it wasn't terrible like that wasn't the overwhelming fear for me it was the dye so when I got there and found out I didn't have the have to have the dye it was like okay I can do this and then they take me back to do the MRI and it was like 
only in there up to like what my waist your waist and, and, and they I- had a mirror over my face so that i could see out of it or i could look down and see out of it so it was like i wasn't stuck in this tube like i thought i was going to be at and all it was actually it was actually technically open-ended on both sides as well yeah and, and they like, let me sit in the room. Yeah, with they you. let Matt come in the room with me. It was, I was like able no to sit big like deal. Four feet from her, which was nice. I I know it was fifteen minutes, but it didn't feel like fifteen minutes to me at all. Like mm-hmm. I was totally fine. Um, yeah. So the doctor called me the next day, said I had a perfect looking brain, which that was nice <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. right now it does not feel perfect. Yeah. Um, and since then I've just been. Oh, and the that's the other thing is the day that I went in after. Um the episode he actually did an exam on me and found out that i have gastritis so that's another thing that i'm actually suffering through right now and i have to go back and see him this week and he believes that the gastritis is um most likely due to the high anxiety and Mm -hmm. nerves from postpartum gastritis is just basically when your entire digestive system is in your stomach yeah your stomach uh, i mean her body's been through so much yeah yeah and i just I've been eating really good and I just cannot put weight back on. Like I'm, I've, I can put on a few pounds, but I just have not been able to get back to my normal weight. And I really want to, I want to get back to a healthy weight. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the timeline here. We are now, um, again, we've, you know, we've been praying a lot. We really feel like God has brought this medication into Angela's life to help her. And it has been helping her. And emotionally, she's been a lot better. And, you know, the, even we've had small little stressful events happen or high energy things. And she's been amazing. She's done great. We think we are on a path to healing now. Um, if we could just heal my stomach, yeah, I'd I mean, be good. No, no. The, look, it's, you're, it's not like everything's A-OK, but um, there's certainly things physically still. And you you still are waiting on like some full night of great sleep. But mm-hmm. all in all, I think we're on the right path. Yeah. I wear my Fitbit to bed every night, and I mean, quite honestly, I get better sleep than Matt does right now. That's true. <laughs> which is sad. Yeah. Um, like, I'm getting an hour and a half of REM and an hour and a half of deep sleep, which those numbers aren't outstanding, but they're better than Matt's. Yeah. So, that, uh, that was a long time, long discussion about the timeline of what Angela's been through and everything, but I don't know. I guess I had a few things that, just to touch on, I mean, because... You know, we talked about the guilt of that was one of your big things that mm. you you feel like you had so much guilt mm-hmm. feeling like you're not an adequate mom. I still I still feel like that right now. I still feel like what kind of mom this fa- <laughs> has a 16 a month old basically and is like so dependent on everyone else. I felt the the biggest thing that I was feeling before I started the medication those couple of days was that I felt like literally anybody in the world could take better care of her than I could. Mm-hmm. And that was a really horrible feeling. And I st- I still feel like for the most part I need help right now. Like I did, I can't I couldn't do all day every day by myself. You mean her. like physically you need help with yeah. taking care of the baby. Yeah. I but just see, feel like I'm not capable right now. And I'm and I'm not saying that that uh that you don't need that or anything but those feelings of like the, the guilt and feeling like anybody could be a better mom, like those are the lies that like Satan wants you to believe. I know. Like I know that. No, I know you do. I'm just I'm just stating that. Like these are the lies that attack us through the anxiety and the depression of it all. And you know he's just like sitting there, you know, enjoying when you have those thoughts and those feelings and they and they take over. And you start believing that stuff, mm-hmm. um, and you know those are not those are not those are not God's thoughts. They're not truth either, and it's, it's not true. That's the thing no. that I'm I've really struggled through this process is lining up my thoughts with with truth. Yeah, that's you know, and ca- and 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 what's the word? Not capturing, but I guess capturing every thought, mm-hmm. you know, and 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 analyzing it basically for. Is it true? Is it, is it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a good word, capture. I mean, anxiety and depression, it really holds your... It sinks its teeth in you. Sinks, it sinks, sinks its, teeth, its teeth in you. That's what I was trying to say. And it holds your emotions and your thoughts captive. Yes. Like you are a prisoner. In your own mind. In your own mind. Yes. And, and you do. You feel crazy. I actually wrote down crazy. Yeah. Because you feel 
crazy. You do. That's the only way to describe it. You feel out of control. Completely. I mean, you also had a lot of guilt about taking this medication. A lot of guilt about that because I have had such judgmental thoughts my whole life about antidepressants. Mm -hmm. And um, just because I feel like they come with such a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not reputation, but. Stigma, maybe? I guess so. That. I don't know. The, I talked about this in the YouTube video, actually, that when I think about people in the past going on them, it would be like, do you really need them? Yeah. You know, like it was it was that I would have those thoughts. Yeah. And now I'm just like, who who do I do? I think I am to ever think that about somebody else. Right. Like, why would I ever pass judgment in my mind? No, I, mean, I never I, talked, said it out loud. I mean, I, I, I feel the same way. I, I don't. Um. It's not something I ever really gave conscious and purposeful thought to, to judge others who are on it. But let's be honest. When you think of someone who has, who has to take antidepressants, you think like, well, what's wrong with them? What's wrong with them? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I could not feel any differently. I could not feel any stupider or I could not feel any more guilt for having, having those thoughts. For ever having those thoughts than yeah. I do now. Same. I, I am completely and totally um, with you if you are on medication and you're taking medication. Matter of fact, I applaud you for taking a step and trying to heal yourself and trying to, to get better <coughs> and not letting these thoughts take captive. It, it, someone the other day, I, I won't like go into it who it was, but had mentioned to me that it was a service that I was having. I was having done. I don't. I, I don't have to be like that secretive. It was at the dentist office. Yeah, <laughs> I was getting my teeth cleaned, and uh, and my hygienist was talking about how uh, gr I was grinding my teeth, and I was like, yeah, you know, yeah, I've been through a lot lately. There's been a lot of anxiety in my house, and whatever. And she's like, oh, everybody has anxiety, and here in California and L.A. and 50% of my clients have anxiety and depression and, you know, you know, this medication, it's like, why is everyone taking medication and you don't need medication? All, you know, all you got to do is just watch a, a funny movie and go exercise. Man, and I, I wish that was the case. And I, I was just like, yeah, you know, cause I didn't want to get into a conversation, but she, she couldn't be more wrong. I mean, yes, those things can help. And sometimes they do help getting some exercise, but, but sometimes it, it takes more than that. Yes. And sometimes the freaking devil has his teeth in you so much so that, um, you know, God has helped these scientists create these things to, to help us. And first of all, this is not a lifetime thing probably for Angela. No, he we don't, thinks we that I'll only be on it, it be. for a couple of months and then that's it. But even if it is, who cares? It's, I mean, whatever. I just have such a different opinion about this now. Yeah. And at times myself, I'm like, why aren't I, why don't I get some antidepressants? Why I need something like that. So, um, anyway, yeah, just disclaimer about that. I could not be any more of a champion. And look, I, I also at the same time know that there are a lot of side effects sometimes to these things that are not good. Right. And I know certain medications don't work for certain people and yes. do, and do bad things and do crazy things. And, yes. you know, a lot of people will warn you, like, don't do this one, don't do that one. And. Um, and, and I don't know, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it's true. Maybe in the long run, it's not right. I really don't know. I'm not a scientist, but what I can tell you is right now, my wife is in control of her emotions and her thoughts and we feel like we're getting our lives back and we're loving our kid harder and stronger than, than we were. And, um, and if that's happening, how can you possibly... Something's Right. How can you possibly argue that? Yeah. And I feel like we're going to get, a, this might be a little bit of a controversial episode for us because I feel like there's going to be people who are just like so against well, of course me are. taking medication. Of course there are. I get that. I understand that. But yeah, if you had been there with me and seen how I truly was suffering and how I truly had tried the supplements and I had tried the diet everything. changes, I had tried everything. Yeah. And it just wasn't working for me. Yeah. I was at a dead end. Yeah. I didn't have a choice. I don't think we're advocates 
for medication no. clearly but we're now like i said we're also not in the camp i of, feel like the onion peels are like removed from our eyes you know <laughs> you know that's a good it's a good way of putting it it's complicated it's 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 full of layers it's not black and white like these oh do it medication or not medication it's just it's not black and white there's a lot of factors there's a lot of whatever so you know no it's, no judgment it's a weird thing because i I don't understand why I've had to go through all of this, both the physical sickness and and now the emotional mental illness as well. But I, I I just really hope that if there's even a single mom out there who's listening that can take solace in the fact that she's not alone in what she's feeling and, you know, that will make me feel like it's at least worth it. Mm -hmm. But I do almost feel like, I don't know, you went through, like God allowed you to go through what you went through so that you could understand me. And now he allowed me to go through what I'm going through so that I can understand you. It's a weird yeah, paradox. Is that the right word? I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a weird way of looking at it or thinking about it, but I have such a compassion for people now for women who have to deal with anything like this in any, in any capacity, but now, especially on the medication front, like I have no judgment to pass anymore. No at all and same with me when it comes to like the mental health thing i i see it in such a different light now yeah the anxiety and depression thing i i yeah i just feel for people going through it mm -hmm. and unless you've gone through it you just you almost can't um on that level but i i have and um i've got a great support system and, and angela does too we got a lot of people praying for us and um and you know and i've had so many amazing people reach out to us to me through mm -hmm. hearing us on the podcast mm -hmm. you know yeah. through dms and i've gotten emails after email and you guys have just been amazing and you know i don't know i'm so thankful for this family that we've built so you know hopefully um <clears throat> at some point we will never talk about this again because yeah. it won't be an issue and maybe we won't do a part three but who knows we end up we might end up doing a part three as a follow-up uh, as, as what we're going to call a part three, if we do it, will be the success story Yes. Uh, to the post um, weaning, post departum, or I'm sorry, postpartum depression and anxiety and, and all that. Uh, we've gone on for quite a bit of time now, so I think we should go ahead and wrap it up. Yeah. We love you guys. Thanks for listening. I hope this episode wasn't boring to you. It's just what we've been experiencing. This is all part of what we've been experiencing as parents, what Angela's been experiencing as a mother and with the hormones of being a mom and trying to raise a kid and emotionally what's been going on, this fits right in with this podcast. So, you know, if this is not what you wanted to hear, maybe it's not the podcast for you because um, this is real and this is raw and this is what it's like to have a kid. And this is stuff that, um, that happens. And we're, um, we're just glad that maybe this can help somebody else out there and maybe we can get some support from people and listeners too who've gone through it and have come out on the other hand. If you do want to call in and, and, and share your story or you know share any tips that you have for us, call the Hello Baby voicemail at 323-544-3051. We'd love to hear from you. Other than that, we hope you guys have an amazing night. We are going to go... Uh, um, I don't know, get cozy and, and, and watch some TV and um, <laughs> not relax. We've got a stressful episode of Game of Thrones yeah. coming up. But yeah, <laughs> I don't know how we're going to sleep tonight. It's crazy. But, but luckily, we've got medication to help us. So. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we love you guys. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. All right, bye, guys. <laughs>